I am at Magpie Fibers in Frederick, Maryland, and it is as amazing as I thought it would be. Hi, I'm Melanie, and you're watching Yarn Journeys. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, I am so glad you found it. Uh, today we're going to go take a quick trip up to Frederick, Maryland, home of Magpie Fibers and the Knot House Yarn Store. If you're a fan of Andrea Mowry, uh, you may have heard about Magpie Fibers from her. Uh, she frequently mentions them on her YouTube channel and also is using their yarn in this year's Rhinebeck sweater, the Alpenglow. So ever since I heard that they've opened a flagship store this past May, I have been meaning to go to Frederick. But first, I am going to do a quick show and tell of my recently finished objects and works in progress. So of course, I am very excited to tell you about my Kurdok cardigan. The design is by Carol Feller and the yarn is her Blasta. It's done, yay! Uh, and my husband took these beautiful pictures of me wearing the sweater and I am excited to share them with you. I also am so pleased with how it fits and how it turned out uh, that I just had to do a little happy dance. So my Kurdok cardigan is done. Um, this being the DC area, it's still a bit warm and muggy here at the beginning of September, but I know that some cooler days are on the way and I look forward to wearing it soon. In works in progress, uh, since I last had an episode, I cast on for a pair of Hermione's Everyday Socks. I am using the yarn I got at uh, Susan's Yarn Stash, uh, and this is sock yarn by Mama Jess's Knits. So I've done the first sock, uh, and here it is. Uh, these are cuff down socks. You know, this is, this pattern is frequently in Ravelry's Hot Right Now pages. It's one of the most frequently done uh, sock patterns on Ravelry. And I have to say, I mean, it's, it's nice. It's not the most, it's free. So there's that, it is a free pattern. I will say it's not the best written uh, pattern in the world. And had I not knit cut had I not knit cuff down socks before, uh, th there's some things in there that would have been scratching my head. Uh, but since I've done it before, I kind of knew my way around a sock pattern and I was able to supply the missing information for myself. If you want to know uh, more about that, uh, um, please let me know in the comments and, and I'll explain further. Uh, I decided with these socks, to do an experiment. So the, um, the first pair I knit with my usual uh, sock needles, which are the Haya Haya Flyers. Uh, they are the ones that have you know metal ends and then a little plastic thing in the middle. Um, and they come, you know, they come in a pack of three. Uh, so um, it's kind of like uh, you kind of knit them like magic loop or like two big circular needles. Um, and that's always worked well for, the for me in the past. I recently got the Chiagu shorties, you know, the ones that come on the little red pouch. So I decided to run an experiment and do the second sock using the shorties. And somehow it landed on the floor. 
So this is, I've started on the cuff. Um, so this is the cuff of the second sock using the shorty. I've got a, I've got a, a stitch marker here marking what will eventually be the instep of the sock. I haven't decided whether or not I actually like knitting with something this tiny. It definitely works and I can manage it. Uh, I noticed yesterday that my hands, I think got a little bit more tired more quickly than I remember with the other method. Uh, but I, I haven't, I'm, I'm going to wait and see. Um, I'm just, it's sort of, it just looks so, well, it just looks so dinky. Uh, but um, I'll let you know how this experiment works out. Um, I'm hoping that the socks are not going to be too different from each other, although uh, that's a risk I recognize could happen. My other work in progress is the hat that I am knitting with my Targi hand spun. So the first, um, the first skein of hand spun, which I really felt like was uh, knittable. So uh, I showed this yarn in with a different hat pattern in the last episode. It's uh, uh, I did uh, knit the whole thing in Lespas Tricot's happy hipster pattern. And when I finished it and I looked at the hat, it was just way too slouchy for my liking. I don't mind a hat that's a little slouchy, but this was extra special slouchy. Uh, so I just ripped it up um, and started again with a different pattern because uh, my hand spun is too precious. And in fact, any yarn you like is too precious to waste on a finished object that you don't love and you're never gonna wear. So I had cast on uh, last week for Isolde Teague's Musselberg hat. And I am uh, more than halfway through, I think. Um, I am knitting this one on um, four double pointed needles. So I guess a set of five. And that's because the increases and decreases in the hat come in a group of four. And I, you know, um, I didn't have a small enough circular needle uh, because this hat is made with negative ease. It is not slouchy. Um, it, this is also one of the most popular hat patterns on Ravelry. And if you're not familiar with it, um, what you do is you make a pinhole cast on at the top. So you cast on uh, four stitches at the top. And I had never done this before. I have to say it was a little fiddly, but I got it done. And then you increase, 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 increase. Um, and then you knit straight down for quite a while, like till it's, I think in this case, almost 18 inches long. Uh, and then you uh, start to decrease, decrease, and you kind of close, close it up. And then you will stuff one end of the hat into the other to make a double layer hat. So this hat will both fit well, and I'm sure will be very warm because it's a double layer fabric. Uh, in any case, I am really pleased with how this yarn is knitting up. It's soft, it's stretchy, uh, it's, been, um, it's been very reassuring to me how well the inconsistencies give a little interest and texture into the knitted fabric. So very happy with how it's going so far. And then the other major work in progress I have going on right now is my uh, spin for Andrea Mowry's Weekender sweater that I started uh, in July for the Tour de Fleece. Uh, I am now in the process of 
plying all the bobbins and finishing the yarn. Um, so I'm gonna keep myself to knitting smaller projects for now. That uh, yarn should all be finished, uh, I think sometime next week. And by then I'll have space on my needles to start another uh, big sweater project. Um, as I have mentioned previously, I am a bigamous knitter, so to speak. I really only like to have two things, two projects going uh, at one time. Um, and my feeling is, is that if I'm, if I put a project down and just stop knitting it all together, I must not be enjoying knitting it. So uh, I'll frog it and do something else with that yarn. Frederick, Maryland is a, well, one might say a far suburb of Washington, D.C. Uh, it is about a one hour drive uh, from where I live here in Arlington, Virginia. Um, it's also about an hour away from Baltimore, Maryland. So it, it, one might call it a far suburb of Baltimore too. Uh, it has that quintessential small town America feel, uh, largely due to its main shopping street filled with 19th century red brick buildings with old timey looking storefronts. Uh, you know, in most in recent years, it's real. It's become uh, a great locale for um, arts and crafts. Uh, I noticed the, the Frederick County Potter's Guild there. There are lots of uh, beautiful stores uh, featuring gifts and um, restaurants. Uh, it is a great place to go uh, for a day trip. Uh, the draw for me, of course, as I mentioned earlier, uh, was Magpie Fiber's flagship store. And boy, it did not disappoint. Uh, the flagship store is in an Art Deco bank building. And the beautiful windows uh, light up an interior filled with magpies yarn collections. Uh, it is almost a temple to yarn, it feels like, inside. Uh, as you walk through, you can uh, view all the different yarns that magpies offers and uh, frequently features in many designers' patterns. Uh, so, you know, you might be familiar with their Swanky Sock and Swanky DK, which is their Merino Cashmere Nylon blend, or their Nest Worsted, um, or their Mohair Silk Feather, or even um, their Cashmere Silk Plume, which is such a delight to touch. They also have yarns on display from Wool Folk and Sandnisgarn, uh, which are yarn brands and bases that are often combined with some of the Magpie Fibers yarns in many designers' patterns. It was a lovely just walk among them and pet the yarn. They have lots of great samples, which I always appreciate, so you can see how the yarn knits up. And if you are a sewist, they have an edited collection of fabrics to a browse, as well as a nice collection of indie sewing patterns. Mandy and Juanita were lovely hosts for my visit. And as Mandy was walking me around the store, I was like, hey, 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 wait a second. What are you, what are you wearing? <laughs> Cause she had on a gorgeous brioche sweater. Uh, and she told me all about it. It is James Watts Earth and Air sweater. And I, of course, was like, 
I want to knit that. That that has to be something I knit. I was it was dazzled. I was dazzled. Uh, so uh, she told me all about the sweater. And in fact, uh, this pattern was one I had seen on Ravelry before. I think it, it featured in the Hot Right Now uh, page once or twice in the in the past few months. Uh, but I. You know, I kind of just went right by it. So first of all, things that are yellow, I'm, I'm not a big fan of yellow. Uh, and the I kind of probably didn't rest on that very one for that reason alone. And also a man was wearing the sweater. So uh, I guess uh, there, my, my biases are on display. I thought it was a men's sweater. Uh, well, I was wrong. <laughs> that sweater is gorgeous. So Mandy uh, told me what I was going to need for that sweater. Uh, of course, one of the things is that I'm going to need to learn how to knit brioche properly. And now I feel very highly motivated to do so. Uh, but I'm gonna show you the yarns that I got for that. Mandy's sweater was knit with one skein of plume and two skeins of swanky DK. So this is the color of plume that I got. It's this beautiful, it's not quite lavender, it's almost like a, a pastel purple hue. This is cashmere silk lace weight. I think it's spun in the same technique that one spins mohair silk lace, which is very common. Uh, I can't stop petting it. Oh, it's so soft. Um, and then uh, I also got two skeins of the Swanky DK. And I do love a gorgeous speckled yarn. Uh, the gauge on the sweater is, you know, is nice, uh, light, and airy. I'll add that uh, Mandy was wearing hers on an 80 plus degree day. Uh, so this, I think, is going to be gorgeous. I have a few things to work through before I get to it, but I can't wait. And the, the swanky sock, excuse me, this is swanky DK, um, and this is 80% merino, 10% cashmere and 10% nylon. So all squishy soft goodness right here. <sighs> I also bought a couple skeins of wool folk flat. Now I had heard of this yarn because I had been eyeing Andrea Mowry's casual mornings sweater. Uh, and th that's something that's been in my uh, queue for a while now. And really, there is nothing to replace actually going to a store and petting and squishing the yarn uh, f for oneself. Because it was, I would look at the description of, you know, wolf hook wool folk flat online and it was kind of hard to uh, imagine what it would uh, feel like so this wool folk flat is kind of like well it's a i guess you might call it a boucle it's not an aggressive boucle it is 100 percent merino and in fact it says here it says uh, 100% Ovis 21 Ultimate Merino wool. So it's definitely on the softer side of Merino. Uh, so uh, I am such a sucker for soft and squishy yarn. Uh, so I, I saw the Wool Folk Flat and they had a fabulous sample of a sweater knit in color work with this yarn and i was like i i i, I have to have some uh so that's i got two skeins 
my sweater queue is getting a bit full and I, I don't want to keep buying sweater quantities of yarn if I know I'm not going to get to it for months and months and months and months. So uh, I reasonably believe that I will knit a hat, a color work hat with these two colors uh, and it is going to be a gift. So Oh, such lovely, soft, squishy yarn. In Frederick, I also visited the Knot House yarn store. Uh, it has been in Frederick for quite some time and it is more of a traditional yarn store, uh, but they specifically specialize in hand dyed yarn and specialty yarns. Uh, so it was quite a treat to have um, two amazing yarn shops to visit and they are in walking distance from each other uh, which is fabulous uh, so uh, i took a tour and was once again dazzled by uh, the displays of yarn they have um, they have their own range of yarns which is mostly hand dyed yarn uh, they also have uh, some ones you've heard of like uh, Biche and Bouche, which uh, is a beautiful and sought after uh, sweater yarn. And uh, I was intrigued to see that they had Manchalope. Um, I'd heard about Manchalope on the Wooly Thistle uh, podcast on YouTube. Uh, and now I got to see it in person. It is Spanish unspun yarn, uh, and it's caked up similar to Icelandic Plato Lopi, uh, but it isn't like Icelandic Plato Lopi in any other respect. Um, it's much softer. Uh, it does have more of a, a feel to it. it it's, it's not a super soft yarn, but it is wound up in cakes. Um, and you can use it uh, similarly. Uh, the, the colors are totally my pastel and neutral jam. Um, and this is something that I wanna knit with in the future. I, I again, didn't buy some uh, while I was there, uh, mainly because, as I said, my sweater queue is getting full. And I knit uh, two sweaters from Unspun Yarn last year, and um, I'm gonna give myself a little break from it before I pick up the Unspun again. Uh, but it is really cool, and I, I was excited to see it there. Well, I was there, uh, they were having a yarn sale, uh, so I did indulge myself in a couple skeins of Knot House's own brand yarns. So this is uh, hand-dyed mohair silk. And this is just beautiful. These colors are totally uh, my cup of tea. And in my deep stash, I have a whole ton of light pink fingering, which I think uh, may be lovely knit double with uh, this uh, mohair silk lace. So, ah. in any case, if you are a knitter and are looking for a day trip in the Baltimore or DC area, I highly recommend visiting Frederick. Uh, you will be uh, thrilled uh, to visit Magpie Fibers uh, flagship store and the Knot House Yarns, as well as to wander uh, the lovely streets and hang out in the shops and restaurants. So that's it for today's episode of Yarn Journeys. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the show, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button uh, and give the show a like and make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss the very next episode of yarn journeys 
So I'll say goodbye for now and thank you for watching Yarn Journeys, where it's you to you around the world.